Hi, this is Hubert, um, and welcome to uh, Decodable Demos, where we demonstrate all things related to streaming. Excuse me. Um, today, we'll uh, demo how to mirror data from Postgres into Snowflake. And in order to do that, we will need to use set up a Snowpipe um, configuration reading from S3. Uh, in a previous video, we've already done this work, but we're just going to kind of uh, quickly go over it here now and then show you how to merge that data into a final table destination in Snowflake. Let's get started. Okay, first we need to um, create, the first thing I would do is just go to our uh, Decodables Examples um, GitHub repository and go under Snowflake. Um, if you go to the root, you'll see a, uh, a set of uh, a table that you can click into. And then um, you could either click this readme CDC markdown or go to the bottom of this page and go for creating uh, create a mirrored table in Snowflake. You see these instructions, okay? Um, what we want to do is to first, um, uh, since we are mirroring data from Snowflake, or from uh, Postgres, we need to create a Postgres connection. We've already done that here. Um, we need to create a CDC connection so we can capture all changes in our uh, our uh, table in Postgres. So if you look at that, this is our connection information. Okay. And this is our table. We force quit this one because it's not running anymore. <clears throat> I'm using uh, dBeaver as my SQL client where I'm going to show you or imp uh, execute changes to my um, to my Postgres database, database. So that's this one. Customers. And any changes that I make in here um, I want to be able to reflect as well in Snowflake, okay? So that's what uh, the CDC connector is going to do for me. And that's going to create me a materialized view uh, as a way to, or a change stream. This is this is a materialized view. Basically, if I select from this using a, a SQL, um, it'll only give me the latest value for each record, okay? So if I change something in here, you'll get uh, you'll get a change in here. For instance, in this record, I changed my number from six, uh, sixes to fives, and that was an update. Um, the operation was an update on the database. We captured that change, and now we could um, basically create that same view in Decodable, and we're going to transfer that uh, information to, uh, to Snowflake, okay? So the first thing we need to do is make sure that to take this, um, sorry, this is our change stream. First thing we need to do is to tra trans um, to change this uh, from a change stream to an append stream. Basically, dematerialize this uh, this uh, change stream into the specific um, um, uh, records uh, or stream that is populating this uh, this uh, this change stream. So if we click in here, we've already actually done this. Uh, customers PG change to append. So if you click in there. I look at the SQL. This is doing nothing but um, changing a a change stream into a append stream. So you provide the the change stream, which is uh, this stream right here. We put that into a function called to append to change that into an append stream, and we're going to change that, uh, treat that as a table. Okay, we're going to grab everything in that and then put it into a new stream called uh, uh, customers PG Snowpipe, okay? So if you look at this, you'll see that it, it changed to an append stream. Um, and we lost the, the key here. Um, so, cause, but we still have the same format. This is the same Debezium format, okay? And we're now going to, um, we're taking this data and we're writing it into a Snowpipe sync, which is writing into an S3 bucket. If you look at that, um, that this configuration, you'll see that it's writing into a bucket called Huber Snowpipe into a directory called uh, customers. 
and this is the ARN that we use to to write that um, data into uh, the bucket okay um, so the first thing we need to do is just to verify that we have a role this is the our role that we're using to write into um, to uh, um, s3 so basically what we're doing here is um, let's go to that role again what we're doing here is giving decodable permission to read from our S3 bucket, and we need to do the same for for Snowflake. Okay, so in here we go to um, I've already created a a role called Snow um, Hubert Snowpipe role, and when we create one of these, we need to go to the trust relationships, and we just need to edit this policy and paste the information that we need in here. In this case, we need this context here. This allows decodable access or to, to enable, um, to assume this snow, this role here, Hubert Snowpipe role, so that um, it can read from S3 and write to S3. This context down here is the um, the, the policy that where you allow your uh, Snowflake to write in, or, or at least read from um, your S3 bucket as, as well. This is the ARN that uh, Snowflake will be using, um, similarly to the ARN that Decodable is using up here. Uh, this external ID is generated from, from uh, the information that we created in Snowpipe. And, um, and this, this external ID here is just the, um, the account name in, uh, in uh, your demo account in your in your um, um, decodable account so you click here you can grab that value in here okay let's go back to here so I've already done that so I can just cancel this I've given this uh, this role some permissions that I've uh, put into this policies this policy called Hubert Snowpipe demo if I click into there it'll open up a new tab you can see all the policies that we, we've, we've provided to this um, um, to this uh, this policy that we've assigned to the the Hubert role. Okay, let's edit this policy and click on JSON. You can copy paste the, the permissions from our decodable uh, um, um, uh, documentation. You can also grab it from the information that you find in here and the the snow pipe uh, configuration the okay. case so go back to here let's walk over this really quickly here we are allowing both the codable and um, snow pipe or snowflake to be able to put get and delete and get objects so this is what um, snowflake needs this is what the codable needs um, the sync to be able to put and get and delete objects from s3 okay um, we also need these to be able to list the contents of a bucket, both a, um, um, Decodable and Snowflake needs that. This is, uh, this is a need for just Snowflake, be able to list the bucket and get the bucket location. We also need specifics on the uh, um, a condition on the prefix of the, uh, of the, um, the bucket, okay? That's all we need, so we can just cancel that. This will we're we're going to use the same uh, role here, so we can close that tab. We're going to use both the same role in uh, Decodable and a Snowflake to utilize um, to assist for those roles to assume. Okay. Go back over here. Just to review what we did on the Snowflake side. So, uh, we are already writing data into this uh, directory and bucket in S3. This is that um, role that we just created, and we're creating a a, um, a storage integration. Okay. From that storage integration, we were able to capture these values here. Um, if you describe this, this this storage integration, you'll see two fields, two properties, the ARN and the external ID. Those are the IDs you would need to configure the IAM 
trust relationships. If you can see that, the ARN is here and the external ID is here. Okay, so that's where you get uh, that's where you get that information from from the integration object, the storage integration. Next, you uh, um, want to use our, the the schema that you would like to all this to use. So by default, it's going to uh, public. Um, and then you want to create a staging area. This is a, the staging area for the data that's coming in from S3. We're going to use this storage integration, the storage integration uh, information to do that. So in it has the, the role to assume and um, the directory uh, that, um, that uh, we're going to read from as well. Okay, so that now we have a staging area. We can create a table in which to put that information into. So we're going to copy the data in from the staging area into the table using a, a pipe, okay? First, first we create the table. Uh, there's only one column in it called source with a variant of uh, data type. This variant will allow us to do, to parse JSON um, specifically. We'll, we'll go through that in the bottom here. Next, we, get, we need to cr actually create the snow pipe or the pipe. Um, and that's going to copy data from, it has a data format, which is JSON, but it's going to take the data from the stage and copy it into the table that we just created up here, okay? From here, the stage into this table. Next, we uh, make sure that we're using the right warehouse. And then now we can select data from that, uh, that table, okay? Now that we have that table, what we want to do is mirror this information into a, a table in um, in another table in uh, in Snowflake. This is like the staging table, but we want to, an, an actual table. So let's do that next. Um, if you go to the uh, the GitHub repository, the README CDC markdown, you want we kind of covered all of this already. We de we are dematerializing a stream into a an append stream. We created our sync. We configured our snow pipe. Now we need to create a stream. Um, in in Snowflake, we also could create uh, an append stream. This stream will watch. Uh, it's, it's basically a CDC stream. It'll watch the staging table for new changes. So let's copy that. Put that in here. In our worksheet. So our stream is going to be, let's copy this, um, customers PG Snowpipe stream. And the table we're going to watch is our staging table. I'm sorry, not the staging table, but the, uh, oh no, you're, you're correct, this, this, the staging table. Sorry, getting mixed up here. So we created that, and now we simply need to create a merge statement, okay? And when we merge something, um, we need to create that in a task to run every so often, okay? So let's, let's copy this code here, and let's walk through what this command or this statement does, okay? Okay, so first we're going to create a task, and that task is called um, Merge PG Customers. We're going to use the warehouse test, and we're going to let this task run every minute, okay? And when it runs, it only runs, or when it triggers this task, it'll only run when um, our stream has data, okay? So look at, let's copy the stream. We're gonna paste that in here. Okay, this is our stream. So task only runs if the stream has data. So this stream is going to have some data based on uh, the changes that are being implemented by the copy. So, so when we put data, when we add um, data into S3, um, it gets notified through SQS, uh, or Snowflake gets notif uh, uh, notified through SQS, and this um, this pipe copies data from this stage into the table. 
okay, of the snow pipe table. Now we're creating another way to no notify ourselves, but this way through a stream. So any changes made to that table will end up in the stream. Okay, so let's, let's select from the stream uh, really quickly. There's nothing in it because we just created the stream and we haven't um, captured any of the previous changes. So this is the beginning. So there's not, we haven't done anything yet. But as you can see, it's, it's got um, the, t the, the single column in that table. The action, so this is going to be like an update, delete, or insert. We're only ever going to be caring about inserts because we're inserting changes from S3 into the staging table. Um, and then some other information that we'll, we won't really need. Uh, but uh, is it an update or in the in the row ID? Okay, but um, we can push this m more information into here so that this uh, um, the stream will get some data. All we would need to do is go back to our table, make a change in here that will populate the stream. Okay, we're not going to need to do that now. We need let's finish walking through the uh, the statement here. So we're watching this stream. We're making sure that it has data before this task gets executed uh, as this. So the task, um, the body of the task is this merge statement. This merge statement basically uh, decides whether to uh, insert, update, or delete records from a downstream uh, table, okay? So first we need to create uh, a table called merge, okay? So let's go down here, let's create um, a table. Um, we don't have one, so we're going to just create one ourselves. Um, create table. Um, this one merge table, okay? And in it has a. Um, actually, let's let's do this in. The other view, data, snow pipe, public tables. Okay. Um, let's add a new table. How can I click here? Is not create table. Here we go. A standard table. We're going to name it um, Snowpipe, or I'm sorry, uh, Customers PG Snowpipe Merge. The first column is um, actually, I want to. Copy another table, Customers Merge. Right. So it's user ID, int, and primary key. Um, it was first name. Uh, last name, bar char, and phone bar char. So let's create this table. Columns, user ID, okay great. Um, and here's that statement. Okay now that we have a, a table to write our data into, let's go back to our worksheet. And so that's going to be the the, t the table that we want to create or to merge our data data into. And then let's create the same um, merge task. Okay. So that's our task name. This is our merge table name. 
So what we want to do is merge into this table using this select. So notice this select is selecting from our stream. So we need to copy this and paste that in here. Our uh, append only um, um, customers PG snowpipe stream. And then in that stream, if you recall down here, there's a column called source. And then in it as an after and first name, last name, phone number. Here, since um, if it's a delete, we're not going to have an after, so we can't get our uh, um, ID from the after, it's going to be in the before. So when we get ID, we have to check to see if the operation is, if it is a delete. If it is, then the user ID is going to be in the before st um, value. Else, it's going to be, if it's anything else, it's going to be in the after value, and we're going to assign that as a user ID, okay? And then the operation here, whether it's update or delete, and so on, okay? Um, here, we're selecting only records that are inserts. We don't really care about any other of the, of the um, records in the metadata action. Remember that this is reading from a stream, this stream here. And then this stream is copying data from the staging, uh, um, uh, the stage, the snow supply stage to the table. So this is only ever going to be uh, an insert, right? If you want to like purge the data in this this table because it could get um, like, it could get big if, if there's a lot of changes to your uh, your to the CD, CDC data or the table that you're changing in the, your, in Postgres, you may want to purge this or truncate this table uh, every every so often. And that'll create an event because you're creating you 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 have a stream here listening to that to that table, so this metadata action down here will say um, delete instead of insert. So you don't really care about um, those uh, those records. You only want ones that are uh, being inserted from um, the snowpipe. Okay, and we want the records that are either delete. Um, I think this is, I want this to be change or upsert. Okay. Okay, so great. Um, now we want, um, uh, we want this to be, to match on the user ID. Okay, so what we're saying here is that match, uh, Match the records in this this table, which right now it is empty, with the IDs inside of this select statement. Okay, so this whole statement here, this the select statement in the, the brackets, its alias is S, and C is alias is the merge the destination table. Okay, so the S is the stream, so any S dot user ID that matches with the contents of the the destination uh, um, table if those match then we could um, we know what to do if, if there if you find one in there which right now remember is empty and the operation is uh, D then you want to delete it so that all, all you need to do is stay delete it if you do find a record that matches and the operation is update or you then update that record with the latest first name, last name, and phone number. Otherwise, if you didn't find yourself a match or the record, there's a record in the stream that doesn't exist in the, the merge or destination table, then insert that record, that new record into the merge table, okay? So um, let's, let's, and this is, so this is going to do that every minute, okay? So let's create this, um, Clean this up a little bit. Right now, the, the stream is empty, um, and we're going to run this first. Okay. So we created that task. It'll run every minute. What will happen is that when I select this, and I don't do anything with it, if I just do a plain select uh, without a merge, uh, I'll, I'll see records come in here, but they won't get purged. If I put it into this context, if I merge it and I and I select fr from that stream and I execute these uh, these um, 
these statements down in here, uh, what will happen is that merge will remove um, the the records in that stream and 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 move up the basically move up what what we typically call in streaming the offset. Okay, there'll be no more records in here, so that you won't be duplicating any records or these executions in the merge statement. Okay, so if this merge runs, it'll after it finishes it with all the records, it'll clear out that rec it'll clear out that stream so that when it runs again and no action has been taken, um, uh, this will be empty here. So um, if it, it won't have any data in it for this merge statement to run, okay, or this task to run this merge statement. So let's try it, okay. Um, let's first go into here. and into data or schema. Now that we've created stuff, um, we have a task and we have streams now, okay? So we have a customer's PG um, um, stream that's listening at the, for changes in the snow pipe table, a customer's PG snow pipe table. We're all, we also have a task a PG stovepipe task that runs a merge statement. Okay, and notice here I have to select a, a test. Um, this will have the history of uh, all these runs. Okay, so one thing I need to do is to make sure that that this task is in a good state. So what we want we can do is uh, show tasks. It doesn't look like that it ran at all. So it, here are all of our tasks. And down in here, if you scroll over, it says state suspended. The others, uh, the other ones that I have um, are already, already running. So we need to change this by doing an alter um, task. So we copy this. Go down here, paste it. Give it our task name. Run that and it should resume. So let's run our, show our tasks again. And now it started. So let's go back to our, um, let's go view that task now. Run history. Refresh this. So it's scheduled to run. Let's look at our clock. At um, 11.34 at, uh, and 6 seconds. So we got a, about 16 seconds to go. <laughs> Okay, so let's refresh this. And notice that it skipped it because it evaluated to false. Um, it's not really an error. It evaluated to false because the stream was empty. Okay, so this evaluated to false. Okay, so look at our stream. It's empty. It's empty because we didn't make any changes. So let's make a change now. We're going to change Hubert. And save that. So that should push a change stream into, uh, or or change record into this um, this uh, the source. It should you should see it in the the stream. We click here, we change it to seven. Um, we change that to an append stream. And then down here, we should see that same record from five to seven. 
and then we put it into S3. So in S3, if we refresh this, there should be one file in here. Should be this one, that's pretty the smallest one. It should have my information in it. That should have um, triggered a change or a notif event notification through SQS that is read by Snowflake. So Snowflake should have ran this. So if you look in here, there's one record in it. But as you, if you recall, I put this in another tab. Our task hasn't ran yet, or it may, it may have now. Um, this next run is um, so it ran something, it succeeded. So let's look at our table. Uh, this is our merge table data preview and there it is okay um, notice that it's 777 we didn't get everybody because it's reading at uh, at the end of the stream so let's uh let's actually fix that we could go into our um pipelines actually let's go to our cdc this is reading from our database and putting it into this uh this uh, exchange stream and then we're going to into this change um, this pipeline reading that change stream so this guy is running and reading data out of that stream we could stop this and make it rerun it and make it start from the beginning oops we accidentally clicked it again Let me stop that. Let's start, let's force this from the beginning. If you run it from the beginning, it should capture the snapshot that we captured initially from our Postgres table. Okay. Okay, so it's reading some data so you can see it down in here we push go to the next one this is the should have all the records and this has snow pipe uh, running to the to the s3 sync um, this should have pushed more records in here there's another record so let's look at that um, table in snowflake so it doesn't look like this is run yet. Let's look at the run history. <laughs> Skip. We want to look for a the the green one. Let's look at our table. And there we are. Okay. If you have any questions about this implementation, let us know.